Hi guys, welcome to class. So, um, yeah, we are still talking about pathogens. Don't forget, pathogens are disease causing organisms. They include bacteria, virus, and protozoa. By the vector is disease carrying organism, the organism that carries the pathogens and then um, infects the host with the pathogen. And I said mostly the vectors are majorly arthropods, particularly members of the class in sector. Now, you see, other means by which um, pathogens can get into your body, look at three at the last class now. You can, you can get into gastrointestinal tract, through the gastrointestinal tract. Now these are roots mostly supplied by bacteria. The food you eat, you understand? The food you eat, um, the water you drink. So you know absorption takes place within the GI tract. So you could have bacteria getting into the circulation via that means. And also in terms of virus, most STDs, sexually transmitted disease. So virus of sexually transmitted disease like your uh, um, your Epis virus, your human papilloma virus, and um, your gonorrhea, your Wuchereria gonorrhea, your Epis simplex, your chlamydia, that's the fungi now, your chlamydia trachomatis, all those, all those pathogens, viruses of sexually transmitted disease, they always come in. Not actually within the gastrointestinal tract, but there's you know there's a kind of communication between the GI and the urinary tract. So viruses of of sexually transmitted disease infect the body via the genital urinary tract. Infect transmitted disease infects the body. Infects the body via the genital urinary tract via the genital urinary tract via the genital urinary tract so please take note of that genital urinary tract and we'll talk about sexually transmitted disease as we go further in this study so there you go now also another means you know, when we talk about the explicit tribe, we talk about influenza virus, also fungi. Fungi, we should also include that. When you talk about pathogens, fungi is also a pathogen. Note, let me write it now in class. So note that fungi, which is also part of the microorganisms, which we classified earlier on, is also classified as a pathogen. Is also classified as a pathogen. In fact, infections, fungal infections are even much more. They are much more, much more um, um, vicious. Let me use that word. Compared to bacteria, bacteria infections, if you have it all good and well, there are so many range of antibiotics you can use. Even viral infections, there's so, a whole range of antivirals: acyclovir, and the and the rest, tonavia, and they have you. You have a whole lot of antivirals that are available. But you see, fungal infections, they are very, very, you know, on a, on, on a normal day, fungi, they are single cell organisms, they are so tiny. And when they proliferate, they have the ability to, when they want to destroy organs, they destroy organs very rapidly, at a very rapid rate. And being that they can easily penetrate the blood brain barrier, they are always indicated when you have so many issues with the CNS, particularly the brain. And then, um, in an immunosuppressed individual, that person is more likely going to be prone to fungal infection. So, fungi is very, very severe and vicious pathogen. So, what I, why I said this is because respiratory um, entry for pathogens, that is, we're talking about ways by which pathogens enter the body. We have said skin, we have said blood. On that skin, we mentioned Epis virus, we mentioned Pox virus. On that blood, we mentioned HIV, hepatitis B virus. On that respiratory tract, we mentioned the influenza virus, basically those that cause the common cold. The that virus is for a common cold. Once you should know that the fungi has the ability to form billions of spores, and these spores can become active in the air. That is, they travel, they become particles in the air, so they travel as air particles. Now, there are times where you are in a place where there's so much density of these spores, because these spores have the ability of staying in the air for a 
certain duration and only with if uh, lucky for you inhale this pause you are going to come down respiratory tract infections so respiratory um, route of entry is one way the fungi gets into the body that's just what i just want to say then also what are we looking at here we also have a mouth this is even a common means because almost we have two major orifices as humans the mouth and the anus and what goes through the mouth food so this is a major route of entry for bacteria the mouth this is a major route of entry for bacteria this is a major route of entry this is a major route of entry for bacteria why did i say so contaminated food where, where which food does the food pass to get into the gi yes bacteria can also enter the body through the gi but it starts from the mouth it's entered to the mouth before it goes to the gi so you take contaminated food food contaminated with your salmonella and terry tds even contaminated water won't contain your vibro cholera your giardia lamblia as well as your typhoid fever typhoid um, bacteria you come down to bacteria infections so mouth is a major route for also direct contact and this cut across all boards direct contact the time when ebola came out about 2014 part of the precaution was avoid crowded places using sanitizer avoid direct contact with people because as like i said the cut across board this is a route employed by all types of pathogens Viral infections, even coronavirus, that's the reason why you sanitize. Coronavirus as well. Although coronavirus is not direct contact, but the question is if the person you are shaking already has droplets, because you know it's more like a respiratory virus, SARS CoV 2. Um, it's called um, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. That is the specific name of the virus. So it's, implica it's a respiratory virus. So in case somebody has sneezed, someone that is infected, same person has sneezed into his hands. That's why they say sneeze to the back of your hands. And if he sneezes directly into his palms and he uses that palm to shake you, that's direct contact. Do you understand? So this is a route employed by all forms of pathogen. Fungi as well. It's direct contact. Employed by all forms of pathogens. All types of pathogens, rather. So it's a common route for all. Direct contact. Going to get infected. And also, this one um, is common means of route in hospital setting, direct contact with infected objects. There's something we call nosocomia infections. This refers to infections you pick up in the hospital. Like Staphylococcus aureus, most people are get infected with Staphylococcus aureus. They get it from the hospital. So there are some hospital infections. There's even the hospital type pneumonia. So, um, direct contact now. Let's not say that. Let's say contact with infected objects. This is common in hospitals because there are a whole lot of infected objects there. That's why you always do sterilization. Autoclaving, which we'll discuss later. Contact with direct objects. With infected objects, rather. So when you contact, when you have contact with infected objects, you come down with infection. So this is also another contact with infected objects. So this is also another means of of entry for the pathogens. That's the reason why you should wash your for instance like insects now if you look at entomology most of all these um most of all these um insects which are like parasites because insects are also parasites there are some insects that because of you get them from dirty clothes they reside in dirty clothes, so the clothes is infected with that insect. And once you pick up and wear that cloth, it finds its way into your body and starts messing up your system. So you clean your surrounding, you wear clothes, you wash it, you finish eating with a plate, you wash it. Just try to keep your surrounding clean. And that's the reason why it's always advised that when you are climbing up the stairs, avoid putting your hand on the rails. It's very important because you don't know who had passed through that stairs. You don't know what germs, what pathogens have been deposited by the railings. And you just climb and you are putting your hand on it. In fact, when you finish going to where you are headed to, you don't wash your hands. 
let's say if you were to consume swallow you just dip your hand into and start eating congratulations my brother you have just introduced bacteria large amount into your system so in next class we'll talk about viral infections see you in the next class